Next Thursday was the final day of the NATO summit in Madrid. Leaders of our countries in the alliance are, of course, responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We'll look at how the world may have changed as a result. First, let's hear from the head of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg. We face the most serious security situation in decades, but we are rising to the challenge with unity and resolve. The decisions you have taken in Madrid will ensure that our alliance continues to preserve preserve peace, prevent conflict, and protect our people and our values. Well, what's clear is NATO has a renewed sense of purpose after Russia's invasion. Funding is increasing, and it has a new strategic concept or blueprint which says NATO uh, now views Russia as the most significant and direct threat. And it'll get two new members, Sweden and Finland, too. Here's the British Prime Minister on that. If you want proof that NATO is a purely defensive alliance, you could have no more eloquent testimony than the accession of Finland and Sweden, quintessentially uh, peace-loving countries that have been neutral for decades. And uh, the fact that these two paladins for peace have joined NATO tells you all you need to know about NATO and all you need to know about Putin. Vladimir Putin sees NATO's expansion as a threat. NATO was created more than 70 years ago to counter Russian expansion in Europe. Back then, uh, there were only 12 members. But here it is now, and you can see it's grown particularly into Eastern Europe as former Soviet Union countries joined. It's become the most powerful military alliance in the world. And this is what it will look like with Finland and Sweden joining 32 members. And NATO's border with Russia will double in size. Well, NATO's hardened position towards Russia is clear. Here's the BBC's Frank Gardner asking Estonia's Prime Minister about President Putin. I think uh, West has been misled by Putin. Uh, that is true, uh, that uh, he has lied a lot uh, and, and has not kept the promises that he has given. And therefore, we shouldn't believe uh, him anymore. While support for Ukraine has been top of the agenda, here's President Biden speaking about that. Ukraine has already dealt a severe blow to Russia. Russia, in fact, has already lost its international standing. Russia is in a position where the whole world is looking and saying, wait a minute, all this effort, you tried to take the whole country, you tried to take Kyiv, you lost. You've tried to take the Donbass and all of it. You haven't done that yet. The generic point is that we're supplying them with the capacity and the overwhelming courage they've demonstrated that, in fact, they can continue to resist the Russian aggression. And so I don't know what, how it's going to end, but it will not end with a Russian defeat of Ukraine in Ukraine. So President Biden there saying Russia won't be able to defeat Ukraine. And because relations between Russia and the West are so strained, we've heard a lot of people described today as a new Cold War. Frank Gardner asked NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg about that. Would it be accurate to describe the situation now as Cold War II, as far as NATO and Russia I'm are concerned? I'm always a bit skeptical about comparing too much because there are differences. We live in a more dangerous world. We live in a more unpredictable world. And that's exactly why NATO has responded in the way we have. And the summit uh, that uh, we have just uh, finished uh, has made NATO stronger, bigger, and more prepared to deal with all the threats and challenges we face. Well, the other priority for NATO is how to support Ukraine. Another $1.2 billion in military aid from the UK and another $800 million in military aid from the US is due to come in the next few days. Right, Kasia Madeira, my colleague, is in Madrid. Hi there, Kasia. So a hugely significant summit, a changing of the international world order in a very real sense. Absolutely right, Lewis. If Jens Stoltenberg is doing one thing tonight, well, he should be celebrating in the capital of Madrid because as those world leaders, as all those delegates go, he will be very pleased with how this summit went. We were promised a transformative summit. We were promised an overhaul of the defence, collective defence of NATO, and that's exactly what we saw. Big pledges, monetary pledges, as you say, 
pledges of extra troops, a massive increase of that fast alert response team as well to boost to the eastern flank, and basically a message of a united NATO. We were promised all of this and we certainly got it. So as we stand here in the centre of Madrid, this is Independent Square, NATO once again showing that it is working to defend independent nations. And the pers perspective from the UK has been very much that Boris Johnson wants to present himself as someone who is increasing military spending at home. I know other countries have promised to do that too. But what happens next, Kasia, is crucial, isn't it, in if countries do actually increase their domestic spending on military budgets? Well, it's absolutely crucial because we heard that pledge from the British Prime Minister. But if you think about it, we were addressed by Volodymyr Zelensky at the summit. And he really put it very bluntly. Ukraine needs $5 billion a month in order to sustain itself, in order to fight back, in order to basically not be taken over by Russia. So when you hear that, it really puts it into context. So the pledges, yes, of course, they are welcome. And actually today, President Biden announced that he will be talking about a further 800 million US dollars worth of military aid for Ukraine. Of course, it's all welcome. But put it into context, the president of Ukraine is calling for $5 billion a month just to survive. Yeah, as you say, that context is also always uh, crucial, isn't it? Kasia, stay there. I want to talk about something else we heard today. Now, at last week's G7 summit, we heard Western leaders joke about taking their tops off for a photo. They were mocking these pictures of Vladimir Putin. Here he is riding a horse, topless. Well, Vladimir Putin responded to those jokes today. I don't know how they wanted to get undressed, above or below the waist, but I think it would be a disgusting sight in any case. Uh, now, uh, Kasia, if we can uh, speak to you again, I'm not going to ask you about topless photos, don't worry, uh, but I do want to know about how Vladimir Putin is really front and centre of so many Western leaders' minds now at that summit, showing the real shift in his place in the world now. You couldn't resist it, could you, Lewis? You just couldn't resist showing those pictures. Look, there is a really serious note to this. If you think about back to the summit of 2010, where the last strategic concept was drawn up, it's a concept, it's the guidelines of NATO that really dictate how this alliance of 30, soon to very soon to be 32 members, how they move forward, how when they have disagreements, how they come together, their values, reaffirming those values and just reminding them exactly what is at stake. So when you think about back 12 years ago, the then Russian president was present. He was, he had the seat at the table. He was invited to the summit in Lisbon unthinkable now, a complete real reversal, a shift change in terms of how Russia is seen. And just think back, let me cast your mind back a little bit further. 1997, Boris Yeltsin was signing the NATO, NATO Russia founding act. There was real hope that Russia could be brought in from the cold after the collapse of the USSR. That is unthinkable now. Today, the threat the strategic threat, the direct threat to the NATO alliance is Russia. And that was talked about consistently throughout this NATO summit. So yes, of course, G7 leaders were having a bit of a joke, laughing at President Putin. But President Putin is watching everything that is happening. He was very closely, no doubt, monitoring what is happening in Madrid. And rather than what he had hoped, a decrease in NATO, he has now seen an enlargement following his invasion of Ukraine. Kasia, thanks so much for that. Great stuff.